Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. It's time to do another upgrade to the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus, and this time we're going to install the filament runout sensor, and I'm going to show you step by step how to do it, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for joining me here on the Print 3D channel. I've been doing a few upgrades to the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus, and recently I installed the heated bed package, and you can watch that video here. And I also got the filament runout sensor from the kind folks over at GCreate. They were kind enough to send this over to the channel for free, so thank you Team GCreate. I really appreciate how much you guys support the channel, and it's time to install that filament runout sensor. This is a super easy process, and I'm going to walk you through step by step on how I did it, including flashing in the new firmware, the new Marlin firmware, that includes all the code for the filament runout sensor. So let's head over to the computer and I'll show you the instructions and we'll get started. All right, before we get started on the filament spool sensor installation, it's a good idea to go over the instructions really quick. And those are posted here on the GCreate form and that link will be down in the description if you guys wanna follow along. But once you open your package, if you've purchased the runout sensor as a separate item, you'll find these items in the package, which is your wiring harness, you have your installation hardware, and of course you have your filament sensor. And in the instruction here, in instructions, it shows you that there are two different ways you can actually mount the filament sensor in. You can mount it flat on the top of the 20 or 40 by 40 extrusion, or you can mount it on the side here of the extrusion. Now I'm going to mount ours on the side like this. I think this is a better configuration. I do like this wiring, the way they have it set up here but I think I might run mine a little bit different because my filament uh, spool is more in the center, but we'll get to that when we get to the installation. Now, as far as the orientation goes, it's important to note how the filament goes in. So if you mount it in the flat way, you're gonna have your filament roll in through the side, kind of a side shooter way. And you can see that demonstrated here. If you mount it in the um, upper, which will bring your filament down to the, to the extruder like that, now, I want to mount ours like this because I sometimes use larger spools and I don't want to have to move this. Not that that's a bad installation point, but it's an optional one and I like this one better. Plus, I can see the arrows for the direction and the wiring. It's just, to me, that looked like a better installation. And plus, you can see here the wires are put along in the aluminum extrusion, which is what we're going to do. So once we have it installed, the next part is to plug in after we do our wiring and, and tuck it away in the aluminum extrusion. The next part is to just connect it to the board and of course flash the firmware to include the filament runout sensor code and then of course there's some instructions here on how to use it and it tells you what will happen and it'll tell you here that once the filament retracts the hot end will automatically cool down after three minutes for safety which is really really awesome so if it takes you a little bit of time to actually get to the filament or if it runs out while you're not there in front of the printer it'll cool down as a safety issue and that's pretty pretty cool i think that's probably the best part of that uh, code is that it actually will cool down the extruder after three minutes and then you can just attend to the filament whenever you need to so these are the basic instructions for this so let's go ahead and start our installation let's check out the parts and let's get it installed on the gmax 1.5 xt plus so the package includes the filament runout sensor all the hardware you're going to need and the wiring harness. Now this was actually designed by Gordon over at GCreate, so this is really cool addition to the GMAX 1.5 XT+. Everything is individually bagged and ready to go. Of course the wiring harness is all set up for plug and play, and the instructions online will show you exactly how to do this. And of course, here's our hardware. So the first thing I like to do, just to make sure everything is going to fit, is do a quick dry test fit on all my parts. And since I'm going to be using the upright mounting method, I'm going to be using this hole. And I also like to check to make sure that my T-nuts threads are perfectly clean and the nut that, or the, the bolt that I'm going to be using with that T-nut. So I like to at least thread it in there once just to make sure it's going to be easy to do. Now I've installed quite a few T-nuts on my GMAX 1.5 XT Plus. So this method may seem a little odd, but this is the way I do it. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to move the filament spool holder bracket out of the way so we can easily install the filament runout sensor. And the next thing I like to do is I like to just set the T-nut into the track of the aluminum extrusion. 
Now I know there's probably other ways of doing this, but I've had a lot of success doing this and I'm very patient, so I think this works the best. So I'll go ahead and thread the bolt with the washer through the upright hole that I want to use and then make sure that the direction arrows are pointing in the direction of the feed for the filament runout sensor. And then very carefully and very patiently, I will slowly align the screw with the T-nut until it grabs those teeth and then I can slowly turn it. And it may take a few tries, but if you're patient, this method actually works good, especially since I only have two hands. Now I've seen other people who put a wedge behind it or try some Loctite or other things, but I found this method works pretty good and I managed to catch the T-nut after a couple of tries and we managed to tighten this down nicely so we can start the rest of the process of the installation. So we'll go ahead and tighten this down here and just make sure it's lined up exactly how I want it because I need to slide over the other filament bracket and align it up with a spool of filament so I'm not constantly moving these two items. So I'll just hand tighten this for now and we'll go ahead and slide over the other bracket. We've got to make sure we grab a roll of filament just to make sure we get our spacing right. And then I'll tighten this up a little bit so I can make sure that the filament sensor sits right in the middle of the two brackets to hold my roll of filament. And I'll tighten these down real quick because I believe this is done with the installation of putting the actual sensor in. The next part is, is we're going to go ahead and plug in using the wiring harness that was provided by G-Create. And this is easy to do. The plug is right there for you. Super easy to plug in, no problems whatsoever. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run the cabling over to the right inside the slot area of the aluminum extrusion. Included with the hardware pack are some really great 3D printed clips that you can use to clip the wires in. And they're very common amongst the G-Create printers. You'll see them all over the place. And they just snap in, you turn them, and slide them into the position that you want. Now we're gonna run the wires behind the main braided cable section. So we'll use two of these little cable holders for the slot, and then I'll tuck the wires behind the main braided cable section because we're gonna go through the top section of the brain box for the G-Max printer. You really can't go any other way. You have to kind of go through the top because the wheels ride up the edge there. So this is a bit challenging, but it does fit. There's plenty of room. You just need to move a couple of cables aside and you'll be able to slide in the filament runout sensors cabling. I just had to move one of the cables over and then there was plenty of room. You just want to slide this through gently so you don't unplug anything or pinch any wires. Once I had it fed through, it was really easy to get it set up. All I had to do was pull it through the bottom and I could easily get it ready to start plugging in. The connection we want to use is this top connection and it's also referred to on the instructions in the G-Create forum. You want to make sure that you align the wires properly or you will damage your printer. In this instance, you want to make sure that the black wire is to the right. And it's a real easy clip or a real easy connection. Just slide it right in and you're all set. Just tuck the wires in how you want. You could add a little zip tie here to tie them together, but I just like them tucked in. And then we're done in the brain box. The next step I wanted to do is just to make sure all my wires were nice and tidy. So I used the last of the little V-slot clips to clip in the last piece of wire above the brain box. That way I wouldn't have any problems with it. The next stage is to plug the G-Max in and get it ready to flash the firmware. Now we're just going to use the provided or a USB cable to plug it in so it's now directly connected to the Mac and let's head over to the Mac and let's do our firmware. Alright, so now that we have the filament spool sensor or the runout sensor installed on the G-Max 1.5 XT Plus and we've plugged it into the board, the next step is to install the firmware. Now this firmware is available from G-Create, of course, here on their forum, and I'll put the link down in the description. And we're going to use Cura to install it, and there are some easy instructions on using 
Kira to update your firmware on another link, which I will put down in the description. Now I've already done this once, I'm super familiar with it. The instructions are super easy to follow. There's even little animated GIFs showing you what you need to do. We're gonna follow these instructions to upgrade or update the firmware to include the filament runout sensor. Now when you download, which is this little button right here, you're gonna get a zip package and inside the zip package is all the different current source codes for the different flavors of Marlin. And of course, these here will be the ones if you're using the dual extruder and the single extruder without the filament sensor. And this is the package we're gonna use with the filament sensor. For now, we're just gonna use this folder here with, with filament sensor. And as you can see inside of here are the different versions of the GMAX, different flavors, dual J-head, dual E3D, single E3D, which is our GMAX, or single J-head. So let's head over to Cura, which I already have launched here, and we'll pop over here, and you can see that we, we are connected to our GMAX 1.5 XT+. And I'm also running a recording of the GMAX, which I will start the recording now, because we're going to start doing the firmware flash. All right, so now we have the GMAX connected with the USB cable, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to Settings, to Printer, to Manage Printers, and now we have our GMAX 1.5 Plus selected. We're going to do Upgrade Firmware, we're going to do Upload Custom Firmware, and we're going to go right to our desktop, and I believe, here we go, and we want with filament sensor, and we want to make sure that we select the single E3D hot end initiate hex file. So now it will update the firmware, which will take a couple of seconds, and we'll do this in real time so you guys can see how long it takes. And of course, I'll probably bring up the window in the bottom left-hand corner here so you guys can watch as it does the upgrade to the GMAX 1.5 XT+. And maybe we'll play a little bit of music here to keep you entertained because I don't want to have to talk through all of this. All right, so it looks like we're winding down here on the updating of the firmware. And I believe it will firmware update complete. And you can see that the GMAX is now restarting. The GMAX is now restarting. So we can close out of this window and we can close out of this window. And I've actually put a small length of filament through the filament sensor just to make sure that it sensed something was in there before we show a live test. And we're gonna close all these windows. We're gonna head over back to the GMAX and let's check out the new sensor. Okay, so here we go, run out, fill in, run out sensor test. Let's see how this works. Putting down the infill so it'll chew through some filament pretty quick. So let's see, it's gonna snap on the roll. Okay, so we have a camera set up on the GMAX control box and have the video recording. It looks like the filament's going through now. Let's see in a couple of seconds here. <laughs> Sorry about the shaky cameras, guys. And there it goes. The sensor has been tripped and now the GMAX will part the extruder head. You can see the filament snapped down there. And it says on here it's waiting for us to unload the filament, which it's actually doing right now, and waiting for us to put in some new filament. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and find the end of this one. That's a nice little alarm that lets you know. Hold on while I trying to end with that snap back filament. This is just a partial roll I have here. What I need to do is do need to straighten out a little bit of filament to load this back into the center. So we'll clip off a little and we'll do it in a nice 
45 degree angle and discard that little piece there. What you do need to do, like I said, is straighten this out a little bit because it's a very straight path through the center. So you want to get this as straight as possible before you feed it into the runout sensor. And this will help. Do that. Okay, so the print says, control box now says, press button to heat nozzle. So we'll go ahead and feed the filament through. Well, I guess you gotta press the button to heat the nozzle. Okay, so now it's heating it up. Once that gets to temperature, we'll load up the filament into the extruder and it should resume the print right where it left off. Temperature shooting up pretty quick. When it gets to about 180, I'll feel comfortable about loading the filament in without causing a jam of the existing filament that's in the extruder. Okay, so we're over 180 degrees, and I think that's Celsius, and I think that's safe enough to start loading in the filament to resume the print. Okay. Insert filament and press button to continue. Insert filament and press button to continue. Okay, so now the Extruder is going to extrude out a little bit of filament just to make sure that there's no gaps between the loaded filament and the filament already existing in the extruder. And see that the filament is a nice smooth feed through the filament runout sensor up on the spool holder too. So now you have an option here where you can extrude a little bit more or you can just resume the print. So I'm just going to have and pull this piece off of the extruder and we're going to hit resume print. And there you have it. The filament sensor does operate properly and it's really easy to work with. It does have that nice pause so you have plenty of time to load up filament and then it'll reheat the extruder, insert your new filament and resume the print. And from what I can tell, it looks like it's pretty much spot on. So now that we have the filament runout sensor installed, the new firmware flashed down to the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus and we even ran a test to make sure it works. We're all set to start printing. I really want to give a huge thanks to Team G-Create for sending over the filament runout sensor. I really appreciate how much you guys support the channel. It's a really cool addition that's going to help prevent any more failed prints. Well, that about wraps it up for another episode of upgrading the G-Max 1.5 XT+. I hope you guys found this episode interesting and informative. If you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out that Patreon link and all the other ways you can support the channel, including those affiliate links down in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Even though I have this really huge GMAX printer, good things come in small packages.